My name is Tim Canada. I live about 90 hours a week at 113 Carl Brown Way, Loveland, Ohio. I also own uh, 914 and 916 Loveland Madera Road in the city of Loveland. My team and I want to make sure everybody understands that what we are discussing has nothing to do with the business before council or any other public or private organization. I'm here tonight to introduce Charter changes to sections 2.1, 2.5, and 2.6 of the Loveland City Charter. Those are direct election of the mayor and vice mayor, term limits for all elected officials. The city of Loveland has got a lot of things going on right now. Most of it is a very toxic, toxic situation. That's why Diane Powers, Barry Kuhn, and I have all thought about and will process petitions for the direct election of the mayor and term limits. The city Council received two versions of possible motions for direct election of the mayor. One of them has an eight year term limit, the other one has a 12 year term limit, including eight years as mayor plus four years as a council person. It is our choice that we will poll the public in the next two weeks and see which one we recommend to council. The advantages for direct election of the mayor is the citizens get to choose the face of the community, not council members. Avoids political maneuvering to become the mayor. Avoids inherent charter issues causing majority minority councils and situations. Ensures the mayor is accountable to the citizens. There are plenty of cities today that have direct election of the mayor including Springdale, Finley, Fairview Park, Middletown, Silverton, Mount Healthy, Cheviot, Parma Heights, Kent, Beaver Creek, which was new in 2016, the city of Cincinnati, Springfield, Troy, Vermillion, Evendale, Glendale, and Woodlawn. What we want, and what we want very strongly, is the citizens be enfranchised to have a vote on who the mayor and the vice mayor is. Now, direct election of the mayor is very simple. The mayor has to get out there, tell people what he, his vision is for the city, and see if he can sell or she can sell what their vision is for the city. The vice mayor becomes a direct elected position through two elections, the current election and the previous election top vote getter would become the vice mayor. That way, every council member has a chance to be the vice mayor, and the citizens have direct say in who is the face and the representatives of the city. Second thing we are suggesting is term limits for all elected officials. Much like the mayor and vice mayor, there are two versions that Diane is sent to City Council and the City Administration saying that there would be a term, two consecutive terms of eight years, or one with three years, and that could be on Council or City Manager. Now, the benefits to being City Manager, or excuse me, the benefits to term limits for all elected officials, one, Avoids long-term political machines from manipulating elections. Allows new blood and ideas to move the city forward. Avoids rivalries between council members being toxic from long-term membership. And avoids PACs influence on council members. Now, there's no secret. I've been very public on Facebook and with emails about this. And there's been expressed concerns about the change. One of the first things it says is it needs dialogue and thought. Don't disagree. But the voters can have their dialogue through election and they can have their thought process, process through a campaign. Everybody can work and hear and see what's going on. Second, A local organization today, or yesterday, I'm not sure which day, posted it only impacts one council member. That would be Mr. Weisgerber. 
This is not about one person. It's about everybody in the community and every council person or every future council person. This also said that Mr. Weisgerber would not be able to run in November and get elected. That is disinformation. By the laws of the charter, 2018, it becomes law, and it would not be current to the next election of 2019. So the voters who elect or diselect or do not elect somebody in November, or this policy, rather, excuse me, in November, it will not come in effect until 2019. Someone that says this disenfranchises voters, I think that's wrong. We all think it's wrong. It gives the voter the ultimate choice on the mayor and the vice mayor. It also gives the voter the ultimate choice on if they want term limits or not. Now, disenfranchising somebody by term limits, term limits have been around forever. They've been around, they're in cities around us. Matter of fact, the city of Beaver Creek just put them in in 2016. People that are against, that I have communicated with, the idea of term limits, have a rational self-interest. It affects them directly. Are there friends? Are there political alliances? If this gets approved, it avoids career politicians. The other objection I've heard is that timing is not right. That's wrong. To get the most residents out to vote for this, councilmatic election turns out more people than a non-councilmatic election. With the recall going, more people will come out and vote. We will get more citizens voting this election than we will in non-councilmatic, non-recall years. Somebody says it will muddy the waters. It will muddy the waters. I have complete confidence in the voters of the city of Loveland to be able to make a good decision on what they want to represent them in the future. In fact, I have complete confidence in the voters of Loveland to make the decision if they want to change for the future or they want to keep status quo, which is majority and minority fighting. It's gone on since 1961. I can talk about Norris, Anderson, Boyke, Skirkowitz, Weisgerber, Fitzgerald, Cox. All of them had issues as mayors that were unfavorable to this city. Nobody can deny that. The fact is this. If we put this through, the voters of the city of Loveland are not people choose to make a change. We're wanting people to make a change too. To avoid the toxic situation that we have here in the city of Loveland. I'm going to share an experience I had in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm walking through Douglas International Airport. I have my badge on from the furniture market. It says Loveland, Ohio. I sit down next to a guy and he goes, Are you from Loveland, Ohio? I said, yeah. Very proudly. He goes, what the hell is going on? Because we watch the news, we read Cincinnati.com, we go to Loveland Magazine for comedy because of everything that is going on. I've heard that from my family, I hear that from customers. As I close, I'm going to say, please do not try to disrail the citizens from having the right to vote because we will be circulating petitions and we will get them signed. Thank you. Is there any questions? All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Tim. Um,